Good morning. Once again, I want to welcome you all to worship with Palomar Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on your journey, in fact, no matter where you are in space and time, listening to us joining us live or watching the recording, I want to welcome you all. It is, gosh, it's good to be together. We begin our services and our public meetings with an acknowledgement of the land that we are on. A red candle is already lit. Acknowledging that Palomar Unitarian Universalist Fellowship and myself, I am two miles from the fellowship, are on the land of the first peoples of this land, the Lusania Nation and the Kumeyaay Nation. We acknowledge that this is indeed stolen land. We do this not to be performative, but to be transformative, to transform our understandings and ourselves in relation to the first people of this land. The people who are not only the first as if they were past, but are still, uh, still on this land and um, fighting for sovereignty and rights. So. If you have um, a candle to light and acknowledgement, we always invite you to do that. Also, if you'd like to know about the land that you are occupying, you can find that in the chat. So once again, welcome, welcome. And again, wanna thank the worship team. It is just a beautiful thing to create worship with you. Today, we're continuing to tra travel the Celtic Wheel of the Year with Aisha's Moonlit Walk. Every six weeks, we're pausing to mark the turning of the wheel through the seasonal shifts. Begun at Samhain, October 31st, our Time for All Ages follows young Aisha and her family through the seasons as she learns life's lessons by traveling that seasonal wheel. And we get to do that too. We get to pause to connect with the wisdom of the rest of nature and knowing that that wisdom resides in us for we are not separate from nature. February 1st to 2nd marks the beginning of the spring quarter it's the midpoint between winter solstice and the spring equinox. That's called in bulk. You'll hear more about that throughout the service. It's a time of beginnings, emergence, transformation, creativity. If you didn't get to see the uh, email I sent or the Facebook post, as we begin our service, I would invite you to get a pen or pencil or markers or paints in your journal or something to write or draw on for later on. And also though, throughout the service, if you uh, hear or see something that evokes something in you, I just invite you to go ahead and make a note, embody it, if you will. How does that sound? Does that sound okay? Now, I invite you to breathe with me one more time as we invite the bell. We ring the bell three times. Once for those who've gone before, once for those who are with us now, and once for those who will come. This is a sanctuary for those seeking their own answers to questions of faith. It is good to be together.
Once again, this is a sanctuary for those seeking their own answers to questions of faith and finding them too. This is a sanctuary for voices lifted up for justice and peace. And this is a sanctuary for you, for all of us seeking companionship on our struggles in our journeys. I invite you to connect with your breath again as we invite the directions, the elements into our worship today. Spirits of the East, spirit of dawn, air and the springtime, be with us as the sun rises in times of beginning, in times of planting. Inspire us with fresh understanding as we go forth into new adventures. Spirit of the South, spirit of fire, of noontime and summer, be with us in the heat of the day and help us to be ever growing. Warm us with strength and energy and creativity for the work that awaits. Spirits of the West, spirit of water, of evening, of autumn. Be with us at the sunsets to help us enjoy a rich harvest. Flow through us with cooling, healing quietness and bring us peace. Spirit of the North, Spirit of earth, of nighttime and winter. Be with us in the darkness, in the time of gestation. Ground us in the wisdom of the changing seasons as we celebrate the spiraling journey of our lives. Spirits of above and below, eternal balance, bless and keep. Join us in our service this day. Spirit of life, spirit of love, you move in through and among us. We don't need to ask you to be with us for you ever are. And now I would like to invite you, if you have a chalice, to go ahead and light it along with us. I'm very excited that Gabriel is gonna light our chalice and we're gonna sing our um, chalice lighting song. So let's take it away. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> ah, we are going to do Aisha's Moonlit Walk this morning, which we've been reading through the Celtic year since we started during Samhain, which was in October. And we have uh, a story called New Kittens today. It says, I arrive at Heather's house early on Bridget's day to help her and her mom set up for tonight's celebration. February 2nd is Bridget's day. Bridget is a creativity goddess. 
The sun is getting stronger every day now. And Bridget's day is our festival of lights. Heather and her parents and I have lined up candles all around the house. Tonight we'll light every one until the rooms flicker in the dark. Some people will paint and some will sing. Lots of people will dance. They'll glow in candlelight as they make something special. We have barely begun setting up when our grown up friend Rupi arrives in a rush, her hair flying from her bike ride through the freezing wind. Coming through the door, Rupi practically shouts, I'm wondering if there is someone here named Heather and someone named Aisha who would like to come see the pregnant stray cat I just rescued. Immediately, we drop what we're doing and put on our jackets, not even thinking that we could miss tonight's celebration. It's a long way to rupees, so we take our bikes. I haven't ridden since I fell off the cut of my lip last summer. I hate the sight of blood, so I've been walking instead of riding. But I want to see the new cat so badly, I don't care. Rupee's kitchen smells like oatmeal and chocolate, but there's no cat. We walk into the living room. It's piled high with books and papers, but still no cat. Rupee starts calling, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. We look under the bathroom sink and in the hallway closet. There is no cat anywhere. Finally, Rupee stands by her bedroom door quietly. She motions us to come look. We can hear the sound of purring. Shh, she tells us. We tiptoe into a room. We look where Rupee is looking, behind a potted plant in the corner, on a pile of old blankets, is Rupee's new cat. Her belly ripples as she pants and purrs, squinting her eyes. She's having babies, Rupee whispers. We still stand there staring. Finally, Rupi says, do you want to watch? Heather and I squeeze hands. We always squeeze each other's hands when something is exciting. Yes, we squeal as quietly as we can manage. I am excited, but something in my belly feels nervous, jittery, and I don't know why. We both phone home to see if we can stay even if it will make us late for the ritual. It's Bridget's day, my mom says. Do something that will make you strong. It's Bridget's day, my dad says. Do something that will make you wise. Birth is the most creative act of all. Heather's mom tell her. It's a perfect Bridget's day ritual. Well, what can we do? Heather and I bounce up and down, but why do I feel so scared? Rupee puts her hands on her head, so we stand still. We stand there watching and waiting. Soon it's dark outside. I have the vet's number in case there are problems, Rupee says, but she knows what she's doing. Mama cats always do. Rupee squeezes hands with us. The cat is purring loudly and her belly ripples faster and faster. Suddenly the top of the first kitten's head starts to peek out. The rest of its tiny body comes out all covered in slime and blood. I want to run out of there. I was so excited that I forgot there would be blood. When I fell off my bike last summer, there was blood all over my shirt and even on my fingernails. I felt sick to my stomach for days. This is too gross, I say, turning to leave. How could something so small be alive? Heather whispers. Rupi shrugs. Magic, I guess. The mama cat starts to lick the kitten's face. We watch as the new kitten takes its first breaths, its eyes closed tight. It's so, so magic. Heather whispers, just about squeezing my hand right off. I look away from the blood, but 
I stay in the room still holding Heather's hand. The kitten finds its mother's nipple and starts to nurse. I think of everyone over at Heather's house, lighting candles and saying what they're proud of and what they need help with. I wish I were there. Rupee, I call, can I light a candle? Well, that would be perfect, Rupee tells me. I find a match and light the candles hanging on her wall. Then I light the candle that sits between figures of two friends holding hands. I turn off all the other lights and the room begins to glow magically. May I be able to watch the kittens being born? I ask the goddess. It's for Bridget's day. She's such a good strong cat, isn't she? I hear Heather saying excitedly. Isn't she a good strong cat? I can almost hear her bouncing up and down. I just sit on the couch, not bouncing at all. But Heather bounds, grabs my hands, and tries to pull me up from the couch. I can't believe we're really seeing the kittens being born, she says. Can you come back? You can hide behind me whenever you want. Ruby comes in and sits next to me on the couch. She puts her arm around me. This is amazing, she says. I remember when my cat Oberon was a tiny kitten, still with his mom. I was there when his eyes just began to open. I held my finger over him and he started reaching up to grab it. It was the first thing he saw. Third, watching from Rupee's doorway, we see that Mama had just pushed out the third kitten. Looking at the kitten's tiny face, I don't think about the slime and blood nearly as much, even though I still look away sometimes and I hide behind Heather sometimes. When we jumped on our bikes this afternoon and followed Rupee, our hair flying, I had no idea I would be able to watch so much blood and not feel sick to my stomach anymore. Rupee, I asked suddenly, do you think maybe I can have one of the kittens when it's older? You have to ask your parents first, Rupee says. I know, I said I never wanted another pet again after my dog Millie died, but now I think maybe a kitten would be okay. The rest of the kittens come out pretty quickly. Only about 10 minutes between the, each of them. I watch the whole time squeezing hands with Heather and Rupee and feeling flickering happiness in me. Heather and Rupee's smiles are so big, they must feel it too. There are five kittens in all. When they are all washed and nursing, we sit in the living room. Rupee heats us up some of her winter squash soup and we sit and eat in the candlelight. Heather's mom, Sonja, comes over on her bike to pick us up. She peeks into the room to see the new kittens. That is the most amazing creative gift in the world, she says. Heather usually rolls her eyes and shakes her head at me when her mom says things like that. But now she put her arm around her and looks at the kittens. Why, she asks her mom. Sonja pauses. My favorite kind of creativity is the kind that helps things grow. We look at the kittens. We are full of Bridget's day happiness. We put on our jackets and give Rupee goodbye hugs. Sonja asks, Aisha, did you actually watch the kittens being born? I know you hate the sight of blood. I shrug and look at the back lights shining in the living room. Magic, I guess. Wow. Quite a story there and a way for uh, Aisha and part of her community to come together, seeing those kittens being born, the beauty of birth, new beginnings. That's kind of what uh, today's about. Our in bulk is coming up on February 2nd, and this is the in bulk service. Bridget's Day, known in other places, and uh, the new beginnings. And obviously that story explains plenty of new beginnings. And uh, speaking of community and coming together, it's time that uh, we do our congregational covenant and uh, no better way to come together than to share 
what we share together, and this is what we know. In mutual love and grace, we journey together, grounded in profound respect for diversity of beliefs and ideas, sustained by service and shared ministry, enriched through collective spiritual deepening, and a safe environment for all generations to thrive and here's our children's version together let me get this bigger i'm sorry together we are more than we would ever be alone therefore we promise to welcome and include everyone to listen carefully and speak kindly to help and share what we have with the community thus do we covenant with each other Thank you so much, Tim, for the story and for leading us in our congregational covenant. Ah, speaking of covenant, we understand as a Unitarian Universalist congregation that active stewardship means that we exist not only for ourselves, but in relationship with the wider community. And so it is that we share half of our undesignated collection with a nonprofit, a local nonprofit. And this quarter, we're really excited to be sharing it with the in California Indian Culture and Sovereignty Center. Uh, the mission of CICSC is to foster collaborative research and community service relationships between the faculty, students, and staff of Cal State San Marcos and members of the tribal communities for the purpose of developing and conducting research projects that support the maintenance of sovereignty and culture with those communities. We'll look forward later this month to having someone from the organization come and speak to us. Now, beloveds, if you are currently in a position to give or to continue making your pledges, there are several ways that you can do that, even in the midst of shelter in place. You can write a check, actually. People still do that, I think, and um, send it to our office administrator. Um, you can set up office uh, auto, auto payments uh, through our database or through um, online, and you can talk to our administrator about that. Or it's really, really easy to donate right here in the moment with text to give. So you're gonna see those instructions in the chat. And so we do, um, we do really thank you, deeply thank you for your generosity. Wings set me free. 
Spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Spirit of life, come unto us. Stir in our hearts, uh, move in our hearts, stir in our hearts. Bring us to compassion and to love, to hope and to peace. Beloved, I invite you to take a breath with me. We pause at this point in our service to be, to breathe, to let the prayer of spirit of life center into our bodies to allow that to move through us and to connect with what it is that we bring with us today. We come bringing the various parts of ourselves from the various parts of our day, from the various parts of our lives. And we pause to recognize that in this time of pandemic and turmoil, there is joy, there is sorrow, there is life and new life. There is death and grief and we hold it all together. This is our time to acknowledge what it is that we carry with us and what we're holding in our hearts. If you have a joy or a sorrow, I invite you to go ahead and you can put it in the chat. And this would also be a time if you would like to go ahead and use your paper and pen, coloring markers and draw it. Just give expression to what it is that you have brought with you today. And knowing that whether it is spoken or drawn or put into the chat, you, we have created a community, a container where all can be shared and held and heard and known. Lane is a great joy of COVID vaccine appointments for her husband and her. So many people who are at risk are able to do that. Spirit of life, spirit of love, Holy One moving in, through, and among us, you are as near as our breath. You are our breath. We are grateful for this time together. We hold in our hearts all who are lost or lonely, afraid or uncertain. May all beings know love protection, health, and be free from oppression. We hold anxieties over this pandemic. We hold hope that we may be able to find and know support as we enter into a year of this time of uncertainty and fear. In these unprecedented times, we are reminded more than ever of our deep interdependence and connection with one another, with the planet, with the animals, with all beings. May we hold on, hold on just a little bit longer. Hold in your hearts a nephew in a psychiatric hospital. Hold feelings of smallness and disconnection and afraid and uncertain, even grateful that beloved companion animal is well. As we navigate these uncertain times, know beloved ones that you are not alone. 
You are indeed held in love and mystery deeper than you can know. Reach out for help, reach out for support. Know that I, we, our community is here for each and every one of you holding exhaustion and fear in the hearts of all around. Breathing in, remember, beloveds, that the holy is as close as your breath. Amen. I think you may have caught me texting. I was texting Kimberly to tell her how brilliantly she transi transitioned us from the prayer into hearing light of community again. So, hmm, thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. So, have you noticed the light lately? Have you? God, I wish I could see you. I wish we had done this in meeting mode. I really want to look at your faces. Have you noticed the light lately? The doves cooing, early spring flowers coming up. I don't think we have those snowdrops here, but I'm crazy about those snowdrops that you saw in the slideshow. What you saw in the slideshow were like that little kind of scraggly, small thing was a sycamore tree on our property. And there was another picture of it surrounded by uh, wooden, you know, like some wood to, to keep it safe. And there's Kimberly's garden and my friend's um, cauliflower. And did I mention snowdrops and altars? Along with what is heavy in, a, in our hearts, saying in the chat, pandemic, loss, still political uncertainty. We see, feel the turning of the season toward warming and the increasing light is here in the Northern hemisphere. We turn toward spring. Growing up in Chicago, winter was long and cold and snowy. I guess it still is, but I'm not there. I loved it. A friend posted recently um, 
pictures of the blizzard of 1967 with the snow way, way high. And even though snow forts were wonderful, I was ready to be for it to be over. And I used to watch the maple tree outside of our bedroom window. I don't exactly remember when those buds would start to poke out. I've been texting my brother and sister all morning, trying to have them help me figure out when it actually happened. But what I do know is after the cold winter, looking at that maple tree outside my second floor bedroom window that I shared with my sister, Mary Ellen, I would see the little buds pushing forth, knowing that the leaves would be coming back. And I could feel the cycles within me. It would be years before I found my way to a structured earth-centered path. 30 years ago, tomorrow, I dedicated myself to this path. Invoke is the time of initiations. 29 years ago, I, this um, February 1st, I was initiated into my earth-centered path. But I began that walk, that year and a day walk, huh, Tim? On this day, 30 years ago, tomorrow. It has been one of the life-changing events of my life. Not really an event, more of a process rather than an event a gradual unfolding and learning and connecting that would bring me to a place of almost unspeakable love and joy. Beginning first with my connection with the rest of nature and then the other animals that I share the planet with. I lack words to describe the feeling. I mean, I could, I could come up with words. Connection, as I said, joy, um, oneness, and also deep learning as I travel the wheel of the year all these many years, out of which our practice of choosing inspiration words comes for that we do on the winter solstice. Now, in bulk, as we said earlier, is midway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. In the Celtic wheel of the year, it's the beginning of the spring quarter. Now, there are a couple of expl different explanations for the origin of the word. Some say it's Old Irish for used milk. Others say it's in the belly. In any case, it corresponds to the birth of lambs. Invoke, as you heard Tim say, and Aisha explored, is associated with the goddess Bridget, who was co-opted by the Catholic Church, became Saint Bridget. Her flame was tended for centuries, even before she became Saint Bridget. In 1220 of the Common Era, a bishop, unsurprisingly, took issue with the fact that no males were allowed in the Abbey of St. Bridget of Kildare in Ireland. He insisted that the nuns should be subordinate to the priests and that they should allow and he insisted to have themselves and their Abbey inspected by priests. Well, they said, what did they say? No, oh, no way. And so he then ended the practice of keeping the eternal flame. Said it was a pagan custom. Well, it was right there. 
and ordered that the sacred flame be extinguished. The story doesn't end in 1220. It resumes in 1993. That sacred flame was lit and now it is perpetually lit in Kildare. I love that idea. I love the idea that we deepen into our connection with the past that is imbued in us in our present and that we are keepers of the flame and that patriarchy does not get the last, the final word. So much of earth centered spirituality connects us to, um, to that ancient present knowledge. For me, an earth centered path has given me the opportunity to remember, to bring together who and whose I am. So, Bridget is the goddess of creativity of poets, of musicians, and singers, and storytellers, of which we have many, many in our congregation, um, scholars, teachers, artists, tradespersons, artisans, healers, herbalists, magic workers, seers, and prophets. Can I get an acknowledgement for all of that? So traveling the wheel of the year has given me the opportunity not only to connect with the cycles of the rest of nature, but also to understand my inner journey and to travel my inner journey as a psycho-spiritual journey. Because what we know, the cycles of nature from spring, to summer, to fall, to winter, are echoed in the cycles of the moon. Hey, what about that big, gorgeous wolf moon earlier this week? How many of you looked at that moon and howled at it? If you did, I want you to put that in the chat. If any of you have ever howled at the moon, put it in the chat. I'm gonna wait here. Yes, yes, Kimberly. All right, keep it coming. Yes, yes, yes. And isn't that what that what the moon evokes in us? Yes, indeed. Bridget is connected. <laughs> yes, of course, George and Sydney. You need to revisit. Yes, next full moon, I'll send out um, a message to remind us all to howl. I will have to tell you that I have had my neighbors join me in howling at the moon. So it was a little odd, but everyone got into it along with their dogs. So Bridget is also the goddess of the moon and the sun. But those cycles of the moon from dark to waxing to full to waning back to dark, in the week from the, whenever we begin your week, whether it's Saturday or Sunday and all the way through, the day from dawn to sun, to, the, to noon, to twilight, to midnight, to the deep dark, back to dawn, we live in and through these cycles. Yes, Carla, it is awesome. Some, uh, we have howlers here. I'm so excited. We live in through and through these rhythms, including the in-breath and the out-breath, which you've heard me say before. Every in-breath, a little birth. Every out-breath, a little death. Breathing in and out. Mindfulness of the cycles of life. Help me to navigate those times in my life when I experience loss and need to let go. And I know that even in the letting go, that there is rebirth. When 
I am in mind, which this spring quarter is about mind and ideas and inspiration and understanding. I can take those ideas and then the summer is a time to bring them into fullness and then to evaluate in the fall and let go and release and then to allow um, germination in the winter and then rebirth at the winter solstice and throughout the spring. So in bulk is a time to, to move into uh, the anticipation of new beginnings because we still have a ways to go before the light becomes fuller. So it's a time for renewal, for fertility, all kinds of fertility for midwifery and all kinds of midwifery. Are we not birthing a new imagination of what it might be for all people to be free from oppression, for us to create political and economic structures? That's midwifing for me. Now there's literal midwifing, but I think we are all midwives. It's a time for love, for purification and cleansing. My word for this morning was purification. And it always makes me go, ooh, it makes me a little nervous. Birth and rebirth, transformation and change, emergence, hope, growth, grief, gardening and planting seeds like we're seeing all over the place. It is also a time Really release what no longer serves you. As I said, that time of imagination and new ideas. How many of you have felt like spring cleaning time was coming or even maybe start of it, started it? Yep, me too. It's a time of communication, planning, preparation, awakening. And so, like Aisha, have you had to overcome fears, deal with grief, make a new beginning after a loss, welcome a new kitten when you didn't think that your heart could hold it because it was so broken from loss? What is this time bringing you? Now, if you have a word, if, for those of you who don't know, um, we have a practice in our congregation at the winter of solstice to choose an inspiration word. And so many, many people here have done that. And this would be a time if you're interested in working with your word to take a look at your word and set an intention, um, uh, see where it's leading you um, to engage it with mind and, 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 uh, and beginning. So I encourage you to do that. Um, yeah, strengthening executive functioning skills and reducing resistance. Yep, that's, that's a good in bulk spring thing to do. So what I would like to invite you to do, beloveds, right now is to just take a breath again. I've said a lot of words. I'm going to invite you to take a breath with me. Do it again. And do it one more time. If it's comfortable for you to do, I invite you to just kind of look around your space, wherever you are. Just take a look around, see what you see, look up maybe. And just notice what's around you and let your excuse me, gaze land on something that brings you joy or pleasure. My altar, my cat, where do your eyes land? And just now go ahead and begin to allow your breath to deepen, deepen, and deepen. And if your feet are on the earth, I invite you to 
Feel your feet on the earth or your bottom on your chair. And imagine that you have roots that go from the bottom of your feet into the, into the earth. Mm. Beautiful things that you're seeing. Feel your connection with the earth. Feel the warmth, the healing, the nurturance of the earth and breathe the energy of the earth up through your roots, your feet, up your legs, into your torso, mm, into your solar plexus, the place of will, into your heart, your throat, what needs to be spoken, filling your face and your head, just feel yourself connected. Breathing in. Notice how your body feels and if there is anything that you feel like you need to release. Go ahead and ask the earth permission to release that into the earth. We can let that go. And now I invite you to connect with what it is that you are anticipating, that you're starting. What new beginnings would you like to start? What is emerging? What is, what is being born? You may see the beginnings and the shoots of it in your life. And go ahead, you can put it in the chat. And this is where I would invite you to write it down, to draw it. And if you do that, take a picture and send it to me, if you will. And let this just be the beginning of your exploration in bulk and the times of beginning. As you move through the days, as the days get notably longer, and it doesn't matter to us, does it, Tim, whether the groundhog sees her shadow? There's a legend, too, that... Um, that the snake would come and see her shadow. And you know, St. Patrick really didn't drive those snakes out of Ireland. She is sacred, they are sacred to the goddess. Signs of transformation. So take another couple of minutes and go ahead and draw or write whatever it is that you feel in your body or in your mind, whatever has come up in this time of new beginnings. And hear the poem of Christopher Donshaw Sims, The Power of the Creative Spirits. We tune in to the muse within as time transcends and sound waves bend to blend with thought. We wind up lost, caught in the worldwide web of creativity, realizing our abilities to bring beauty to life skillfully. Is it mystery? No, it is tangible triumph. We are swimming in the verses of collective choruses of everlasting determination. We are but demonstrations of ongoing orchestrations without limitations. Unrehearsed, we search for the perfect beat, the melodious speech, the proper paint techniques, the flawless dance remover, maneuver, electric radiance and art designed on computers, raw uncut rock on guitars backed by delicious lyrical bars. In so doing, we have achieved Saturn, the Sun, Mars. It is tranquil will. 
real. It is something we can feel. It builds and builds as we reveal. We are yet, we are unable to yield. Only deal with art, the base of the word of heart, where this all comes from, flows from. It impacts, inspires, encourages, strengthens, pursues, empowers, enables, transforms, challenges us, and, and unites us. It is fire, freedom, force. Fire, freedom, force. Fire, freedom, force, fierce. A course of action, anticipating stimuli from your heart, your third eye. It is the power of creativity, the power of the creative spirit inside us, reminding us of who we are, what surrounds us and what the universe is. How many of us live lives of passion where we are asking ourselves, should we put away our studies or the company's laptop to hop into hope of humanity? How many of us are undercover rock stars, soulful shower singers, drum beaters, modern day da Vinci's? It is the power of creativity, the power of the creative spirit. My loveds, let this be a time of your burgeoning creativity for yourself, for what is stirring in you, waiting to be born. Nurture that, let it be, and let the power of creativity, the power of love, the power of inspiration be with you and guide you and us together as we imagine possibilities of what might be for us, for our beloved planet, and for all beings. May it be so. As we end our time together, I wanna to remind you to stay connected, even as we stay away. Deep bows, much thanks to the Earth Care Ministry who are nurturing the little sycamore and Susan Thayer got one for our little roundabout. And if you get a chance, come to the grounds, take a walk, do the labyrinth, y'all. This would be a perfect time to do a labyrinth walk. So, get into that labyrinth, connect. When you get to that center, you go ahead and open to see what is being uh, being spoken to, what is stirring in you. How does that sound? Does that sound good? All right, I invite you to join me in our chalice extinguishing words. Although we extinguish this flame, we carry in our hearts the light of truth, the warmth of community, yes. And the fire, yes, of commitment until we are together again. And Kimberly, isn't it so that our lives could be as a song? you to go in peace. Be makers of peace. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Um, so this is, uh, we're going to close out uh, this webinar in just a moment. Um, oh, we're going to put our virtual patio link. Is that in there? You can join us um, on our, for our virtual patio time. 
<coughs> excuse me, which will begin in 10 minutes. So you can come back, not back, go there, right? Go there in 10 minutes and we can gather and hang out for a little bit and just uh, visit. And maybe you can share what you drew or um, what came to you um, as we gather. So we'll see you all in 10 minutes um, at our virtual patio in meeting mode. So. This little heart of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little heart of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little heart of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Bye, everybody. We love you.